So I mentioned that Dundas is not just about the aliens, it's also about the ghosts. I mean, you have a very historic town with an interesting past. I'm not even talking about in the sense that it's just historic, so there's ghosts. I'm talking about that, like Hamilton, uh, it is got a strange history to it, that uh, Dundas was almost like a rebel town compared to the other cities and towns in Canada. Uh, now, so they have a lot of historic buildings. Now, the, the one that kind of interests me the most, I was deciding what I was going to cover on the podcast here, but uh, there's a school. Now, it's not in the main downtown core. You have to drive up the street a bit. It's now been converted to lofts. It's right before you go up the hill uh, to the, the escarpment there. Uh, but this, this school was called Dundas District, and today it's lofts. But back then it was a school. Not that long ago, I'm talking maybe... Uh, five years ago, ten years ago, it was a school. But for this story, uh, we're going to go back to the 1950s. The 1950s, inside the school, there were five caretakers. Now, the caretakers all had different stations around the school. Uh, they would you know, do anything from handiwork to cleaning to whatever. They just took care of the building, made sure that everything ran perfectly. Now, I don't know the names of the other caretakers, but I do know the name of one. One of the caretakers, his name was Russell. Now, the reason I know him is because he's the one that came up with kind of a strange idea. Now, they, they decided to have, or he, he brought this to them, and they all agreed that they were going to do this death pact. I don't know, maybe they just loved the school really a lot. Maybe back then it was different. Uh, but they decided that whoever was the one to die first would be the one that returned and haunted the school as a ghost. You know, it is so weird, but as if by fate, the one who died first was the guy who came up with the idea. So maybe the other, maybe the other caretakers were just like, yeah, whatever, Russell. And maybe he was the weird dude of the bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we, if we die, we'll come back and haunt it. But he, you know, Russ, Russell was uh, serious about this because he's the one that died first. And it was his job to focus and clean on the top floor, which is the third floor. And it's just not surprising that that is where a lot of the ghostly experiences occur today. So uh, Russell, the death pact, he died first and he did follow his pact. He came back and haunted the place. Now, uh, I'm going to say recent uh, caretaker, but recent would not be recent. It's probably about eight years ago, as we do on this podcast. So a, a uh, caretaker named Veronica he, uh, she was uh, cleaning the third floor, and then she heard keys jangling in the distance as if off of one of those old key rings that some people still wear on the sides, um, especially caretakers and, and uh, janitors and such. Now, she thought it was her co-worker, Tony, but he showed up soon after, and he had no key rings. She asked him, was that you? And he's like, no, I don't. my keys are in my pocket. I wasn't making any noise when I was going. Like, Why would I jangle my keys? Uh, and just as they're discussing this back and forth, they both saw a shadow. Uh, it walked out uh, one of the rooms there and uh, walked across the hall into an opposite room. Now, they mentioned uh, seeing the shadow. They also gave some details. So if you have, like every time I talk about a ghostly or, or in this case, a UFO experience on the show, I always try and uh, dive into it, into the experience and say, okay, what are the elements that prove it to be true? And then what are the elements that uh, kind of show it to be fake? And here uh, it will kind of prove it to be true is because when they saw the shadow, they didn't just say, I saw a shadow and it walked in the room. They actually described how the shadow looked. Now, there are no photos of Russell that I know of. Uh, no uh, mentioning of how Russell was built. But if you do believe this to be the ghost of Russell, this could give you that information. So they said the shadow was tall. They said it was skinny and lanky. So I don't know if you've, uh, you know what I mean. So tall and lanky, maybe hunched over a bit as he walked uh, across the hall into the opposite room. Of course, they went to check the room and there was nothing in there. So that would give me the detail to believe it. And as well, uh, it was subtle. And uh, the most believable ghost stories, in my mind anyway, are always subtle, never too over the top. In fact, if it's too over the top, then you have a hard time believing it. But seeing a shadow, which me personally, I have, 
I have seen these, you know that there's detail to it. So from my own personal experience of seeing shadows at the wonderful Hermitage ruins to these people seeing it, yes, I could describe how the shadows looked as well. Uh, mine it looked like they were wearing a dress that puffed out at the, uh, at the waist, uh, both the same. They were like mirror images of each other. And in here they said tall and lanky. So that gives me the ability to believe it. The other side of it is that they aren't the only ones to have experienced Russell over the years. So uh, Dundas District School, as I mentioned, the building is still there if you want to do a, a drive-by and see it. Uh, right at the base of the escarpment, I'm blanking. I think it's King Street in Dundas. I'm pretty sure that if you go right up to the top, it's still King Street. But that uh, you can go have a look at the building. It is lofts now, so you can't go inside. Even when it was a school, not a good idea to go inside.